Good Friday morning, everybody. Live and direct from downtown Memphis, Tennessee. I'm meteorologist Austin Onik. Just past the top of the 8 a.m. hour, and things are, again, decently quiet for right now. We're just not seeing too much of anything to worry about in the way of immediate problems, but we do still have that potential of severe weather on the way as we get into the course of the rest of the day today and into tonight. We'll time things out for you coming up here in just a little bit, so stay tuned for more on that. Thanks for joining us on Friday morning. If you have any questions for the forecast, it's scrolling down beneath you on the bottom of your screen and also again seeing uh, more information again here as, as areas into and around the rest of the Mid-South. Uh, if you'd like to know more about what's going on with the forecast out there, we'll have more details coming up here in just a little bit. Again, most of the areas should be decently quiet for right now, but much of what we're going to be seeing throughout the rest of the day is going to be mainly just cloudy skies interrupted by some areas of rainfall and the possibility, unfortunately, of some thunderstorms out there, including that potential of severe weather. We'll talk about that coming up here in just a little bit. It is Friday morning and things again relatively quiet for now. Drop your location and your comments, uh, location especially in your weather reports into the comments section beneath and we'll feature those as we can. And again your complete forecast available here at wreg.com slash weather. And if you like to see anything on here that has not been featured before, if you'd like to make a suggestion about anything on that, please let me know. Again, my email address here in the blue bar at the phone thingy over here on the side at austin.onic at wreg.com if you'd like to know a little bit more about that. Taking a quick look into the area of seismology. And again, technically, this is nothing to do with weather, but because we are so near to the New Madrid Fault, we do like to keep an eye on stuff like this. And just early this morning, there was an earthquake up around the area of Williamsville, Missouri. It was 2.6. It was a very small one, no damage indicated or report. But here's the cool thing about this. If you felt this or know someone who did, and this happened at about 4.20, 4.30 this morning, all you have to do is go to my social media web pages, especially my Facebook or Twitter pages, and you can find out more about this earthquake and about how you can participate in what's called citizen science. If you felt anything, any effects from the earthquake, if your pets felt anything uh, going on at that point in time, or if you felt anything else around the rest of the Mid-South, you can head to the Did You Feel It link from the United States Geological Survey and from the Center for Earthquake Research and Information, and please fill out the details, and you can participate in scientific studies. You don't have to have a Ph.D. to participate in some of these things, and the more people that can participate in stuff like that, the more we can understand more about things like the New Madrid Fault. So if you'd like to know more about this, please head to my social media web pages and find out a little more. Cloud Cloud cover overspreading the area into and around the Mid-South. The view from Heidelberg Elementary still on spring break at this time. A view from Germantown, from just north of Germantown High School, looking back around the area to the northwest and seeing more clouds on the way through. 53 degrees, pretty dry at this time, 61% humidity, and we're going to need some more saturated air to allow the rain that's moving in to make its way all the way down to the ground. If it's too dry down toward the surface, the rain several thousand feet up makes its way down, falling toward the surface, but if it's too dry down here, the atmosphere just rips all that rain apart. It evaporates, and there's really not much of anything left over except for rain showing up on the radar way up top as what's called Virga, and then dropping down to the ground but evaporating before it gets there. So we'll be seeing more rainfall out there a little bit later on. Baptist DeSoto camera in South Haven, we turned it around from its usual position around I-55 and Goodman Road, looking back toward the east, and again, more clouds starting to make their way on through. Likewise, downtown Memphis on the Cotton Exchange camera, Clear view down toward the surface, a few blue sky patchy areas making their way on through the cloud cover. We're going to continue again to see this cloud cover thickening up throughout the course of the rest of the day today. Not seeing a lot on Storm Tracker 3S radar at this time. We are going to continue to see, again, the potential for some more showers developing over portions of northwest Mississippi. My storm tracker thing is, my de de developing storm track here is not working, so let me just manually move this thing for right now. South of Clarksdale, down towards Shelby in Mississippi, the occasional flare-up, you can see some lightning markers popping up here from time to time, so we do have some thunderstorms developing, or at least trying to develop anyway, as they move across into northwestern Mississippi, but not a lot of anything else going on just west of the News Channel 3 counties, Lee, St. Francis, Cross, and Poinsett counties. Some scattered showers back around central Arkansas and continuing to move into around northeast Arkansas. Outside of a rumble of thunder, we have just not seen 
too much of anything in the way of problems just yet, but this is kind of signs of things to come as we go throughout the rest of the morning. West Tennessee, the metro area, and the rest of the Mid-South to the east of the Mississippi. We're not seeing a lot going on just yet, but into around northern Mississippi, you've got a lot more activity going on here. And again, some rumbles of thunder close to Clarksdale this morning down toward Greenville. A lot more activity going on just south of us into and around Jackson in Mississippi, Monroe in Louisiana. That moving across the Mississippi River, and we'll be seeing more of this heading our way throughout the rest of the day. And again, still not showing anything in the way of major amounts of precipitation yet, but that could be a change as we go into the rest of the forecast. Uh, welcome to Judy Ho, Patty Benefield Gilbert. Uh, Patricia Burtis, welcome to the show. Grenada, uh, Bill Killebrew, welcome to the show there. Malda, Missouri, Susan McNeil, Reinhardt, Kenneth Sims, Stacey Joe Harris Clark, you're welcome. Thanks for tuning in. Good morning from Ripley. Heather Link, welcome to the show. Lexington, Tennessee, Regina Martin, and Gwendolyn Jordan, and Leatrice Harris Day, Slidell, Louisiana. 64 degrees there. Thank you very much uh, for tuning in on that. We'll keep an eye on Storm Tracker 3S radar throughout the rest of the morning, and if anything does turn severe, doesn't look like a great possibility of that, but stay tuned for more on that. Now, through the rest of the morning, again, it's been decently chilly. Some parts of the Mid-South, Bethel Springs managed to make its way down into the mid to upper 30s into and around the area for this morning, and mid to upper 40s to lower 50s for the most part across much of the area so far. Continuing again to see those winds starting to pick up a little bit more into the rest of the day today, but not seeing again a lot of major problems just yet. So a quick thumbnail sketch of the forecast. Better chances of rain and thunder as we go toward this afternoon into this evening. Continued chances of thunderstorms probably right on in through News Channel 3 at 10 with Tim Simpson and possibly into overnight around just past midnight. But then some nicer weather for St. Patrick's Day. We'll take a look at the seven-day forecast coming up here in just a little bit. Rain continues to overspread the area as we go through about News Channel 3 live at 9. Lunchtime, News Channel 3 at noon and afterwards. Showers and again some thunderstorms embedded in here and chances of rain and showers and thunderstorms will continue right on in through around rush hour home tonight. Just what everybody wanted to hear for traveling purposes out there. So a little bit of extra time and a lot more space between you and the vehicle in front of you for braking distance would not be such a bad idea. Technically, that's good advice at any time, but especially where rainfall is concerned out that direction. Emma Williams from Forest City, Arkansas. Thanks for joining us. Beverly Elliott Carter, welcome to the show. Uh, Ruben Bobo Ross from Becker, Minnesota. Minnesota, 29 degrees, a bit on the brisk side, a little bit colder than the Mid-South area for there. Temperatures into tonight remain well above freezing, not unlike Becker, Minnesota right there. But we will see, again, some temperatures a little bit cooler thanks to the rainfall cooling the air off, which is pretty typical. Now, past midnight, the rain showers and the thunderstorms move into around middle Tennessee, northwestern Alabama. And then the big surprise happens. Over the last couple of days, the forecast for St. Patrick's Day was not looking all that great. And then it looked like this one storm system, the first of two coming on through, this one moves out as we get into tomorrow. So drier air by the time we wrap up News Channel 3 daybreak into Saturday, looking a lot better there. Then as we go into the rest of Saturday... Very calm, very pleasant, very dry, at least where it comes to rainfall, and just a few clouds drifting on through. Beyond that, we don't really have much of anything happening, so a very pleasant St. Patrick's Day coming up. Only some limited amounts of rainfall early during the morning. Most of the rest of the Mid-South should be seeing, again, the potential of less of anything in the way of rainfall for uh, much of the area, so looking pretty good across uh, much of the Mid-South for the time being, so no major problems being seen at this point into Saturday. But into Sunday, this is where things change around a little bit. Going toward late Saturday and early on Sunday, we start to see more clouds at first, and then we start to see more chances of rain approaching the area with our second storm system. First one going out, moving across the area, going back to the east. That one could be the fourth nor'easter in as many weeks for the east coast state. So if you're traveling, say, anywhere north of D.C., Baltimore, Philly, might want to check your destination in the next couple of days because we could be looking at even more snow and low visibilities for that area of the country across portions of New England. So keep that in mind. For us, Sunday evening is going to be the next one. That second storm system coming on through could be our next potential problem. Now, good news, this is a brand new forecast from the Storm Prediction Center. 
and it looks like right now, yesterday they had us in a slight risk category for basically all of the News Channel 3 viewing area. Last night's forecast issued just after midnight had us in a marginal threat. This green area down here extended well on up into where we are in the broadcast area here. This information is brand new, issued within the last hour, and the Storm Prediction Center has now taken out the Mid-South area, the News Channel 3 viewing area is no longer looking at the potential for severe weather. So good news on that for at least anywhere into the area for today. So that's good news. Now this sort of pale green area, not on the list, but this is just generic thunderstorms. So we'll be expecting rumbles of thunder into the rest of the day embedded with those showers and thunderstorms, but it looks like the severe weather threat is now going to be from middle Mississippi down to the Delta and back to around southeast parts of Texas into later on. Now, into the weekend, things change a little bit. We're expecting an update on this forecast within the next couple of hours. Saturday, the threat stays well away from us. We're over here, and the threat for severe weather is over here toward the Red River, the Metroplex, and into northwestern parts of Louisiana. Now, this forecast also will change. That's day two tomorrow. Day three, as we go into Sunday, the Storm Prediction Center has the slight risk category back once again, right on the southern borders of the News Channel 3 counties, right into west central Mississippi, Jackson, back over toward Shreveport, south of Little Rock and Fort Smith, southeastern Oklahoma, northeast Texas. This will be the target zone for severe weather coming up on Sunday evening into early Monday morning. Now, once again, this is still three days out, so it's a good possibility that this forecast will change into the next couple of days. So we may see this possibly head up our direction and get worse, or like we saw today, head away from us and hopefully not be quite as bad as what we're seeing for right now. Some of this could linger into around Monday morning, possibly very early Monday morning. So this definitely bears watching. So if you're going to be out and about throughout the rest of the weekend, things are actually looking pretty good at this point in time, so not really doing too bad at this point, but we'll keep our eyes on that into the early part of next week. So Leatris Harris Day, Memphis area Tuesday. How's it looking? Well, let's go ahead and take a look at the uh, seven-day forecast to give you an idea on that. Mid-60s today, showers developing first, thunderstorms into the rest of the day, and could be, again, some severe weather in there, maybe some stronger areas of severe weather uh, down to our south. But we could see one or two isolated severe thunderstorms, so just keep that in mind and keep it tuned to News Channel 3 just in case. Now, tomorrow, early during the day, right about sunrise, we may see some lingering showers, but most of the rest of St. Patrick's Day from different from a couple of days ago is looking a lot better, no question about that. So, mostly sunny, some clouds here and there, but that's really going to be about all we see for now. Heading into Sunday, temperatures cool off a bit and we reverse that process. More clouds in the morning, showers, and thunderstorms throughout the rest of the day into afternoon and evening. And that is where we see again the potential for stronger weather past about dinner time or so. Once again, that forecast we just showed you could change a little bit uh, either direction. So keep it tuned to us here at News Channel 3. We'll keep you advised on that. Monday, the last day of winter. Temperatures quite unwinter-like back in the lower 70s with showers and thunderstorms continuing. Some leftover showers possible for the first day of spring, which starts at about 10.15 Tuesday morning, and much cooler as well. Highs only back in the mid to upper 50s as we are rapidly heading into springtime. Don't get too used to these temperatures because we may see some cool numbers for a while, but it's about time for us to really start ramping the temperatures up over the next several days. So Tuesday, outside of a few showers, we're just not looking at too much of anything going on uh, out and about this point in time, so not really seeing too much to worry about there. Uh, Mary Ann Watson Gray, stay dry, sun come out, Hernando for a bit. Well, that's good to get a little bit of sunshine out there. The extended forecast, looking into the rest of the numbers, the really good news at this point, the last few days, we saw a lot more rainfall here. The blue box is showing the percentage chance. And for the last couple of days, outside of Thursday, which didn't have much to begin with, we were kind of bracketed in by more rainfall. Now we've had to sort of remove that as the forecast numbers do their thing. And as of right now, looking at the next best chance of any rainfall coming up as we head toward next Sunday. But again, that's about 10 days out. So anything that happens in this area is technically more of a suggestion than anything else. We'll know more, a little bit more concrete as we get a little bit closer to the event coming up as we go throughout the next several days. So we'll have updates through the 
weekend, so definitely want to stay tuned for more on that with News Channel 3. Catch my forecast with Bob and Josh on Talkback Live on AM 730. Yahoo Sports Radio will have more on that until 10 o'clock this morning. And, of course, you can catch my complete forecast on the East Arkansas Broadcast Network stations, Country 92.5 and Oldies 102.3 throughout the rest of the weekend. We'll keep you updated on that. Don't have any new pictures out there. Would love to show them, but I can't show them if you don't send them. And otherwise, I just end up showing most of my stuff, which seems a little selfish. So I'd love to be able to give the time to other people out there. So if you have any pictures, weather pictures around the Mid-South, or if you're checking in from anywhere around the country or around the world, to give us some of the pictures to take a look at and tweet them to me at aonic underscore WREG3. No underscore necessary, aonic WREG3 on Instagram and also on Facebook, Austinonic WREG. And we'd love to have more of your pictures out there as we go throughout the course of the rest of the morning. Hope everybody has a great Friday. We'll have a update on the forecast throughout the rest of the morning on News Channel 3. We'll also have a little bit more coming up on News Channel 3 live at 9, News Channel 3 at noon. The tournament going on today, so keep it tuned to News Channel 3 anytime. And, of course, on my Facebook page, Twitter, and Periscope, we'll have an update coming up at 1035 give or take, somewhere around that area. Kind of depends on when we get the updates taped here in the studio. We have a lot of updates that go on while you're watching News Channel 3. A lot goes on here in the studio, and sometimes I can't tape directly or record, I guess I should say tape. I'm kind of dating myself on that. But if you'd like to show, uh, tune in for a little bit more weather information, join me online at about 1030, and we'll talk about weather where the troops are. If you have friends or loved ones stationed overseas, we'll take a look at some outposts where the United States military are stationed and show you a little bit more about what's going on, but be sure to join me just about 1030 or so later on this morning and right before News Channel 3 at noon as well. Stay tuned for more News Channel 3 on air and online, and stick around for more throughout the rest of the weekend. I'm meteorologist Austin Onik, live from downtown Memphis. Thanks for joining us on Facebook early Friday morning.